with that, you know, Coach Chris, obviously I've had the chance to to work with you when you first got out here. Uh, that time you were still a strength and conditioning coach. And I know I may have asked you this type of question in our previous interviews in, in, in my show, but for the sake of those who are, I mean, just maybe getting to know you or who haven't really heard about your story, can you maybe just share your, your journey, talk about uh, how you all ended up here. I mean, you're from Jersey, right? Like, I, from what I remember, and from your cap, I think it's pretty clear which New York team you are kind of rooting for. <laughs> Just tell us about that journey, how you end up getting to to where you are. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd love to share it. You know, I'm from, I, I grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, I wanted to play in uh, college basketball at Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken. And uh, after uh, I played, I finished college, I worked. I worked as a chemist for about seven years, and I got tired of doing that and being the lab rat. And then I, I, I told myself I got to give my chance. I'll give myself a chance to at least say I, I tried to play in the Philippines, and I, I decided to fly out here in 2008 and, and try my luck in uh, the PBA draft, actually. I entered the draft. Uh, you know, uh, it was a great, uh, one lesson uh, type of experience, learning type of experience where you can't be really scared to fail. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so after the draft, uh, I decided to, uh, I knew I the, my only way to get into the PBA was coaching. Okay. So I didn't have, you know, I didn't know the, the major circles out here or even how to get into the uh, coaching fraternity. I, I really started, I looked online, I saw uh, coaching jobs. And uh, Coach E Basketball came up online. And I was like, oh, this? I applied and, and they, uh, they uh, accepted me. That was my very first coaching position. I'm sure you guys know boss Eric Ariola. Uh, uh -huh. The very first player I ever coached out here was his son, Champ. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was such a pleasure, you know, uh, coaching that kid. And I think by chance, I think it was by the universe kind of leading me towards that way. And and boss Eric kind of asked what what my what I was doing out here, and I told him I was doing strength and conditioning, and and it was by uh, really luck that he said that uh, the Patriots were having a. Uh, like a tryout for coaches. And so I told him, uh, I was like, hey, can I get a, a opportunity kind of uh, having that demo, get in that demo interview? And he told me to go to practice the following day. Um, you know, I, I share a funny story all the time. Now, the first day of practice for the Patriots, I, I bought a, t a tire from Evangelista and I brought it in, my t in the taxi that I rode and the driver was kind of looking at me crazy. <laughs> went, I went to their first day of practice holding a tire uh, on my side of it. And guys were looking at me weird, but, you know, uh, it was one of those things where I kind of had to think outside the box yeah. and make an impression right away. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be hired as a, the strength and conditioning goal. For the how did you get into strength and conditioning I mean, from being a chemist and being a ball player yourself? Like, how did you kind of, I guess learn or um well i i had to um you know get certified i went back to the states and i got certified through the um i think it's isaa international sports and american so something like that and i forgot the this certification i acquired because i figured i didn't have any you know i didn't really like i said i didn't know anyone i didn't the I didn't really have the connections and, and try to um, get on with anyone out here, but I knew fitness, you know, that's one of the things that um, became a key for me to get back here. And I just dedicated myself to that and, and it, it created a niche for myself and, and get my foot in the door on the team. I figured that, once I wasn't on the team, I'd, I'd be able to learn from great teachers and, and like Glenn Capacho or Louis Gonzalez was on that team. Or Don Cardell was on that team. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, uh, Patriots moved up to the uh, PBA, becoming Global Port. Uh, and Coach Glenn brought me on as well. Uh, and 
I was on, I was there for about, I think a full year. Uh, I was there with you for, I think a, for one conference. Yeah. And, then, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, I kind of left the PBA for a, full, uh, a year and I went into training. Um, that's when I, I did a lot of player development. Um, I was doing things for free at that time just to get my name out there, um, try to train as much guys and, and share the knowledge and improve my my kind of philosophy. Um, and Coach Glenn had the opportunity to come back to the PBA with uh, Kia, with Boss Manny. Um, and so he called me up and brought me back on, and I was so grateful for that opportunity. So, um, and you know, the whole history with Kia of me being there from Coach Glenn to Coach Chito, and then um, Coach Chito uh, resigning, and then me being appointed. Uh, that's pretty. That was pretty much the, the, the sh uh, short end of the story, and that's how it all got. That's how I, I got there. Coach, so when you got to Kia, you were the strength and conditioning coach, or you were a strength and conditioning coach, but you're also um, on, on, on the floor coach. Yeah. Um, coach Glenn um, allowed me to kind of expand my uh, responsibilities from as with strength and conditioning to uh, kind of uh, a defensive specialist for him. Um, he uh, empowered me to uh, do our defensive, um, you know, and getting them ready to for his main defensive schemes. So um, I was fortunate enough to um, have that uh, empowered um, responsibility given to me by Coach Glenn. Warning on Coach Paulo Layud for delaying the game. Technical foul on Coach Anton Altamirano for resentment to a call. Coach Charles Chu out of the playing court. Coaches unfiltered. No reps, no techs.